Good morning. How are you? <sighs> mm. I love being with you guys. I love being in a room with you. So yesterday, we got a lot of exposure to presence and state and how to drop in really quickly. Um, thanks to Tyler, he showed us how to work our heart rate, how to be more coherent. Um, and so I'm going to invite you right now just to put everything down and settle in. If you're sitting down, it's great to settle in because we have 15 minutes to set the tone for your entire day, which is kind of cool, right? So settle down and just close your eyes for a moment and take a nice deep breath. Really let yourself have this breath. And if checking your heart rate works for you, or simply breathing works for you, or simply noticing that you have a fantastic body that is holding you right now works for you, just be here. And set an intention for today, for the experience you would like to create for yourself. What is the experience you would love to create for yourself today? How do you want to feel? How do you want people to feel around you? And how do you want to show up? What's the experience you want to create? And when you have a feeling for that, go ahead and open your eyes and come back into the room and take another breath. All right, so here's the great news. When it comes to presence and impact, the thing that sets the tone is every single one of us. So what I found in this work over many, many years is that our presence is our impact. We set the tone, the way that we walk into a room, the way that we hold space with another human being, the way we think about things, we set the tone. And in every moment, our energetic presence is either creating expansion or contraction for people. So feel into that, expansion, contraction. It's creating abundance or scarcity. Our presence and the way we think about things and see things and be in relationship with things is creating an invitation or resistance. And it's all at our choice. We set the tone. So the work that I do in the world, as Paul mentioned, is called Intentional Energetic Presence. And I've distilled it down into a methodology, which is called the IEP method. And basically, this is all about how we show up in the world. It's how we show up for ourselves, and it's how we show up for other people. It's how we make ourselves feel, and it's how we make other people feel. And this, in my experience, is a little bit of the secret sauce as we've all been talking about setting the tone, this is the secret sauce in my mind to leadership and culture. So if you break this down, you've got your intentions, what you want to have happen. You have your energy, which is the actual energy and stamina to make those things happen in the world. We've got to take care of ourselves. And then you have your presence, when, which when I look at presence, I look at it in a very holistic way, which is how present am I to this moment? How present am I to this human being? How present am I to what's happening in my life and in my organization? So intentional energetic presence, it's a body of work. There are three parts to the methodology. The first one is being able to reboot your presence, which you guys know how to do. There's a whole framework around it, but I'm just going to invite you to just be present, so you're here. The second part is being able to create a strong energetic field and foundation, which is all about self-care and relationships and mindset. And the third one is the ability to create intentional impact, which is what we're going to do today to set the tone for your entire day. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Five steps to intentional impact. This is one of the components. I want you to think about today. At the end of tonight, the end of today, when you put your head on the pillow, what are the outcomes you would love to have from today? So first step is outcomes. Oops, sorry. First up is outcomes. What outcomes would you like to create? And an outcome is something that you would not have without this day. This is, it's tangible. You can see it. You can go, yes, I did it. 
So for example, I want to make three new amazing connections that are authentic with three new amazing people. I want to learn this about my business. I want to get this question answered. So just right now, write it down. What's one thing you want to make sure you get out of today? And you can have more, but you can come back to this exercise later. And once you have your outcomes, I want you to think about the human beings that are involved in creating those outcomes. And so we want to look at what is the emotional impact you would like to have on the people around you? How do you want people to feel engaging with you? How do you want to feel? What's the emotional impact you would like to create with this human being? And this emotional impact is going to help you create this outcome. The third thing you want to look at is in order to create these outcomes and this emotional impact, what is the presence you're going to have to have? How will you have to show up? You know, if you want to create trust and credibility and you want someone to feel seen and heard, you want to show up as incredibly present, not on your phone, not looking over their shoulder to see who's coming next. Showing up as an invitation is a really big deal. So set an intention for how you'll have to show up. The fourth thing is, what will you have to believe? What will you have to believe about this human being, this project, this conversation, about yourself? What will you have to believe in order for your presence to be congruent? So last night, somebody was saying that they really want to make some new, they're new to the community, they want to make some new friendships. And they said, God, everyone around here is so amazing. I don't know what I can contribute. Anybody ever experienced that before? So a belief that might be helpful to that person is, I believe I am a contribution to any conversation just by being present. So what belief will you have to hold? The fifth step here is, what actions will you have to actually take? What will you have to actually do in order to create these outcomes and show up that way? Got it? So. We're moving through this fast, and that's perfectly great, because you guys are here. If you guys weren't here, we couldn't move through this fast at all. <laughs> but this tool, this tool is something that you can use for anything. This is one of the tools. We have about 20 that we use to help people integrate this work into their life, and this is one of them. And this is something that you can use before you go into a meeting, into a conversation, before you go in to fire someone or exit them out of your company. I've used this tool, I've seen this tool used in divorce, people trying to figure out how they're going to communicate and move through the divorce. I've seen this tool used to have a conversation with your kid about something really tricky. This tool can be used for anything, and you can use it with your teams. I've also seen it used to close really great sales deals. So play with this tool, and if this tool is helpful to you, if this resonates, and don't take any of the steps for granted, that's the thing I always have to say, especially beliefs. If the tool is helpful to you, then you guys can go ahead and you have access to it at this site right here, iep.io. And if you go here, this will give you access to other tools away as well that we just give away because we want you to have them. All right? So everybody have their outcomes for how they want to set their tone? All right. So in the spirit of setting the tone, let me just check time. Oh, we're so good on time. In the spirit of setting the tone, I want to share something with you guys. Um, I wrote something, and uh, it's very uh, close to my heart. It's been something I've been working on for a while. And what was interesting is in sessions yesterday, I really saw how much <laughs> so many of the people that spoke to what was important to them ties into this poem. So I thought it would be a really fun way to close this out and kick us off. So sit back, relax, and just be present with me. And this poem is called, The Leader You Will Be, an invitation. How does a leader inspire the folks? Does he shut down and grimace and say, nope, 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 nope? Does he need it his own way, see few employees in his day? Does she scream and demand and not offer a hand? Does she shout? Does she pout? Does she have to figure it all out? Does she whine? Does she cry? Does he take his marbles and say, goodbye? Does he lie? Does he make you feel wrong, 
Say one thing but do the other. Does he treat you in a way that makes you want to call your mother? No. A leader doesn't do these things. She doesn't even try. She gives it her all with an authentic reply. She meets, points, and rallies. She speaks her own mind. She believes in her people. She leaves no one behind. He challenges, he inspires, and he compels others to do the same. He knows what you're up to, what you're about, and even your name. He recognizes and acknowledges he doesn't have to know it all. And when he's stuck, he's not afraid to make the call. Help, he will say, for this I need experts smarter than me to collaborate, differentiate, explore, and be the best we can be. She invites risks and takes them. With her, you are safe. She encourages growth and learning, inspiration she leaves in her wake. You'll see her in hallways. In your office, she may stop. But it won't be just because something's wrong. She might just want to talk. He wants you to feel seen, to feel valued, and free. And he celebrates and inspires the results by including you and me. He shows courage and vulnerability. She questions her own culpability. He stands for gratitude and generosity and quickly cleans up any drama or animosity. Yes, these are some of the things she does. And yes, they're all fantastic. But he has a secret sauce, one that makes him quite elastic. And you have it too. It's yours for the taking. But take it on fully because your leadership, your next level of leadership, is waiting. See, underneath all of this, while leadership gets the glory, if you really want to play the game, there's much more to the story. She stands tall and confident, her presence commanding. He leads and inspires without shouting and offending. She takes exquisite care of, himself, of herself. On this, you can tell. His posture is fantastic. He eats really well. She lives in her body. She takes care of it every day. And he prioritizes self-care without further delay. She knows she can do more, can serve, and contribute if her energy she intentionally distributes. He also gets that his people count on him something gigantic. So he commits to sticking around in a way that's authentic. He doesn't do it by the book, for that wouldn't be fun or real or even work. So he leads his health creatively, and everyone gets the perks. This kind of leadership, it is solid, not hollow. Thoughtful delegation, accountability, and white space, the people, they will follow. See, underneath, this behavior is something quite remarkable. His intentions, energy, and presence are authentically unstoppable. And if you were led by her, you'd become a better person. Not because she'd force you, there would be no coercion. He'd hold space for you to step into. His presence would compel it. But again, not because he'd make you, he doesn't have to sell it. More so because she'd see you. She'd see what you can't see yet and she'd grab you by your soul to be the biggest you could be. She'd ask you to lead, to contribute something fierce, and you'd question your ability, perhaps even through tears. But he'd ask, he'd demand it, he'd share what he could see, and he'd ask you again to be the biggest you could be. Not for yourself or your wallet or your fame, but simply because you care about integrity and people and that integrity in the game. She'd approach and pull back. She'd guide, push, and pull. And after being with her, your heart would feel full. And you'd know you could do it. After all, how could you not? Because once you've led with this leader, you cannot not take your shot. So off you will go to make an impact and serve. Because with this awakening, you're ahead of the curve. For you've been touched by the gift and the game of leadership, of having someone champion you who knows that you are hip. Go forth and lead. Make your own way. The people are counting on you. This is what she'll say. 
and I'm here in service. I love you. I care. I won't do it all right. I will mess up. Beware. But you can count on me. We are one and the same. Leadership has called us by spirit, by name. Get out and lead. Give it all that you've got. Take care of yourself. This will sure mean a lot. But you have work to do. Don't question it. Don't pause. The world needs you now. Play the game. Choose your cause. And you, you will not be able to stop yourself because you've been inspired. And here's the real trick. The old you has been fired. See, you are this leader now. You have work to do. So get out there and lead. Consider this your cue. And that's how it works, folks, one step at a time. But don't do it alone, for together we will climb. There are things that will not serve you or your people or your cause. There are things that will piss you off, hurt you, and make you feel raw. But lead, for goodness sake, no matter what you do. Stay present, stay real, stay alert, stay true. There is so much to lead for. There's so much good to do. With an abundance of need, the world is waiting just for you. The time to lead is now. Wouldn't you agree? So come along, lean in, get your game on, and show up as the leader you will be. Thank you. You guys, thank you so much. I was so excited to share that with you. <laughs> um, so let's set the tone. Who's the leader you want to be today? Wherever you're at is perfect. And what's the up level for you? So let's get out there. Let's show up. Let's make a magical day. Here's how you can reach me if you want to reach me. And I am so excited about today. So thank you.